We continue with our top 12 driver uh, press conferences here at Richmond. We're pleased to be joined by Denny Hamlin. He drives the number 11 FedEx Ground Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. He's currently ninth in points and uh, won this race, uh, not this particular race, but certainly won at Richmond last fall. And uh, Denny, I'll ask you to talk about that, but also talk about your event, uh, charity event last night. Heard it was pretty exciting. Yeah, well, we've, uh, you know, it's, it's always great coming back home, obviously. Um, you know, we were, uh, it's just, it's been a great racetrack for us, you know, between here and Martinsville. Um, been able to lot, lead a lot of laps and, and win some races. So uh, it's, uh, you know, that pressure's off of us, you know, to, to win here. But you know, we just come here with a kind of a relaxed a a attitude. Um, you know, we had the same car we had last year uh, in the fall, and uh, we just hope to do it. the outcome's the same. We had, uh, Mike said, the same tire um, as we had in the fall, so everything should be pretty close. Uh, last night was a great night. We had uh, over 5,000 people there uh, in a place that holds about 4,000, so that's, uh, that was good. Uh, had a great race, obviously. Uh, a green-white checkered finish that I wasn't the best part of. I wasn't on the winning end of. Okay, questions for Denny. We've uh, got a little bit of a time crunch here, but we'll get to as many as we can. Go ahead, right here. Jenna. Jenna, we'll go Jenna, Jeff, Mike, Liz. Jenna Fryer, AP. You said about Martinsville a few weeks ago that a bad day there, you can still finish fifth driving backwards. Do you feel the same way about this track? This one's a little bit harder. This one's, um, this one I feel like that number's moved to maybe like top ten. Uh, Martinsville's a little bit different. Um, here we've seen, you know, it's not like Martinsville where you see 24, 48, 11 every time you go there. Um, this one, there's always some other guys kind of sprinkled in there, and uh, some guys really, you know, the two really runs well here, the the five. It's just a little bit tougher here. I, I, I don't know why. Um, you know, I, I probably because I have more laps at Martinsville than I do at this racetrack, but... Um, It, it could be. I mean, I mean, it's tough to say. I mean, it's just I'm not as good at it as I probably am at, at Martinsville. Um, you know, obviously it is it is nerve wracking, especially before we got our first win in the fall. Every time I came here, it was very nervous. I, for practice, I was extremely nervous. Qualifying, extremely nervous. This time, I mean, it is for some reason I'm just way more relaxed this weekend than what I've been here in, in the past, and it probably is just getting that win out of the way. Okay, we'll go Jeff, Mike, and then Liz. Uh, Denny, how is the knee, and what kind of challenges does this track present as far as your knee goes? Well, I feel like day-to-day uh, -day I gained about 1% or half a percent since the surgery, but for some reason uh, I'd say over the last four days that number's been like 5% better. It's taken big leaps right now, so it's uh, I can almost walk pretty much normal, so that's, that's good because hopefully it'll – raise less questions uh -huh. but uh it's just uh i knew i was gonna i didn't think it would be this far into it that i would still feel the effects but uh obviously i am and uh, you know but obviously it's not affecting on track performance so it's just uh it hampers everyday life and in weekly life but uh you know nothing here on the racetrack <laughs> this one will be this one will be more challenging this will be not as bad as phoenix um, on it, but it will definitely be much harder than where we've been the last two or three weeks. So um, I will be interested to see what kind of pressure I can put on the break uh, here at Richmond. Go Mike, Liz, and then Jeff Gluck. Go ahead, Mike. Denny, it seems like we're almost into a pattern where it's more likely we're going to have overtime than not. Uh, uh, and and I think particularly here maybe. With that in mind, do you, do you feel like you have to sort of save yourself for 10 or 20 extra laps? save your car can can you factor that in and all well i think you just I, th I think you know if you're in the top eight with 20 to go you still got a fighting chance where before you pretty much if you could somehow get to the top five you um that was going to be a win for you at that point you know that was your goal now if it's top eight with 20 to go and you feel like a caution is coming out you know you have a good shot to win so um we know that what it's been historically is we've had not necessarily the green-white checkers at the end or overtime. 
It's that we've had a long run leading up to it every single week. So everyone's had to pit. So then it's had to make teams make the adjustments to, all right, where are you going to take two or four? So if we would just had a bunch of short runs, green white checkers would be no issue because everybody would be on the same tire schedule. But it seems like we always have that perfect segment of 30 laps, 40 laps of green flag racing, then a caution with 10 to go, and everyone's got to make a decision to stay out, pit, two tires, four tires. So I think it's crazy that that, that situation's worked out more than, than the overtime because we see cautions a lot, but it just used to be that they ended under caution instead of you know the exciting finishes we've had this year. We'll go Liz, Jeff, and Jim Utter. Go ahead, Liz. Turn the mic on, Liz. Thank you. They want you to do it, too. <laughs> I can scream. Um, yes, this is a question about kind of dynamics between and among <laughs> teammates and Joe Gibbs. And, and if there's no answer, that's totally fine. But I'm wondering, you know, your team has three hugely talented guys with quite strong personalities and, and drive. Does Has Joe Gibbs played any role in sort of keeping the relationships or dynamics among you, you know, constructive or, or, or you know, not a, an issue? And if he hasn't, no um, big deal. But. No, no. I, Joe really hasn't. I think he handles more of the day-to-day the -day stuff, say, you know, Kyle spats off about something or another or yells at NASCAR. Maybe, maybe he'll say something. I don't know. I haven't asked that part of it. But as far as, you know, the, the three of us, I feel like we do have good communication. You do have a really young group of guys there that are, you know, the future of, of the company, and, and Joe Gibbs realized that, and you're all going to be there for a long, long time. So um, it, it's it's tough at times having a constructive conversation with Kyle, but uh, but we we make it work. You just got to learn his language. 